Well, hello everyone. This is my first ever unboxing video. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. As you can see, this is the Tamiya King Hauler, mole number 56301. It was first released in 1993. I got one on the first day of UK release. Uh, was that 20, 27 years ago? And I'm still buying them. So, what do we have? This is a personal favourite. I've been told the 14 scale ones. But this is the first, the original and the best. Ah. Great box art. They look great in red. Um, shows you the three speed transmission on the front of the box. So it uh, tells you what the gear ratios are. Uh, further around the box, on the back side of the box, we have the I call them X ray views for want of better words. Yep, there are the X ray views, and that's on that side. Um, the box ends are just plain old box ends. And we have here another x-ray view of the electric motor batteries speed controller um, x-ray view of the differentials the golden parts just here are bronze bushes bronze or like a copper bush a little bit of information here about what it is what it does the three speed gearbox um, tells you the gear ratios of 132.9 and 1 to 17.66 and 1 to 10.66. So that is the box on the front. It does tell you what you need to run this kit because all you get in here is the motor. You'll need a minimum of a three channel. It says four on here, but you do need um, three channels if you want to use the electric uh, trailer legs. So you have one channel for the steering, one channel for the gearbox and one channel for your speed controllers. That's three channels. If you want to use the Tamiya multifunction control unit, you will need four. But ideally, you'll need um, a battery a speed controller and a charger and some servos servo for the gearbox a servo for the steering and a servo for the fifth wheel coupling if you want to fit that option so that is Tamiya King Hauler so let's see what we've got in the box this never gets boring That is what we have. That's how it should look. And the chassis rails here. We have metal parts, suspension, gear bevels, gear shafts, drive shafts, shock absorbers. They send these in pink with the King Hauler. Don't know why. And we have some gears, metal gears in the transmission. We have all the chrome parts here, the main cab here, and we have um, extras in here. So let's dig in and let's find out what's in all of this. So these will just slide, should slide out. So they are the uh, chassis rails and they have printed on them um, you can see that just here left and right and we take that blue b 
protective film off. So, yeah, it's quite a big, quite a big kit. So let's put those there. Right, let's get the cab. There's the cab. It is in one piece. What I've got in mind with this truck is the Kenworth W900 from the Moving On TV series driven by Sonny Pruitt. So this will be going to the um, body shop um, which a friend of mine runs and he will be painting me this in metallic green. I'm going for a metallic green, not a um, early 70s flat green. I want this to be a little bit uh, special. So yeah, that's uh, in one piece. I will also be cutting this down. So the sleeper is separate from the cab and there will be a reason for that. So let's take out the chrome parts. Our first bag here, we have the fuel tanks. We have some running lights here. We have mirrors, air horns, fender indicators, and uh, pretty much the same on the other tree as well. And I even get, although we'd only need four of the um, roof marker lights, these um, parts, uh, which is Tamiya H parts, um, they're identical, so it will come with three and three. So that is one. We have on this one uh, the fuel tank end caps, steps, um, exhaust parts, air cleaner parts, and because they have the same on either side, we have two of the R parts. more more chrome parts so here we have the exhaust stacks we have the headlights we have the main grill more exhausts we have two air cleaners and um, the outers and the inners we have a roof uh, sun visor and wipers and we also have the brilliant chrome bumper rear bumper and quarter fenders and a couple of plate and uh, the mud flap hangers on that one so lots of chrome parts lots of chrome parts here we have two identical parts trees these are parts tree f we have the, the step um mounts that mount the chassis to the steps and the fuel tanks we have the chassis cross members, we have the suspension rear radius arms um, and various other um, suspension parts on there. We have clips for the transmission, we'll go through them when we do it and because there's the same on both sides we have two of those and they are F parts, fantastic. So we also have some clear plastic windows, slightly tinted, of the side windows and the windscreen. Nothing really too exciting about those. So what do we have here? We have sealed box. So we have the exhaust um, metal um, heat shields um, diff shafts there's four in there two left and two right we have the bevel gear shafts for the differentials the gear shafts for the transmission pinion gear and then uh, this gear here and a gear here metal leaf springs main drive shaft um, through drive shaft for the double drive we have a metal Tamiya axle anodized pink 
no idea why they do them pink I would change those colors to something a little bit more neutral and here we have the genuine Tamiya 550 motor these are ultra reliable but they are ultra fast they really they really drain batteries quite quickly and they are really fast I'd recommend changing one of those as you build it because it's a real pain if you have to change that when you've built it so pre-order one of these I always go for the Carson Poison truck puller which is an 80 turn fantastic motor um, have them in all my trucks and I've fitted them in a lot of trucks that I've built for other people so what is in this box let's break those seals so this is the blister pack we'll leave that just there for the time being in here we have transmission casings and we have the rear axle casings I'm going to take these out of the bag um, a little bit later on in the video so in here we have the steering wheel dashboard seat bases steering wheel column the, um, the sunroof for the top of the truck let me get that in there camera so that basically goes in there um, I don't like that it's uh, part of the moulding process I would imagine two seats and the rear panel for the back of the cab I'll get these all out and I'll show you in a little bit more detail um, coloured parts here we have all the uh, red lenses headlight lenses fog lights and the roof markers and indicators great stuff we have the um, front and rear cross members for the chassis we have the uh, main cross member that goes between the rear axles we have the first of our transmission parts just here um, these are not made of the same material as the, the, the chassis cross members this is made of a slightly harder nylon because these are obviously rotating parts moving parts and you don't want them to wear out so yeah no, um, had my gearbox um, built for 27 years still running the same gears still running the same transmission never had a problem great gears and we have some more um, gears here this is going to be a very detailed build on how we fit the transmission together because it is tough it is something that a lot of people have struggled with um, so I've built quite a few so I get that uh, chrome plated plastic front wheels the chrome on these are very good I still have some uh, off the original King hauler that I bought in 93 but that now has alloy wheels so yeah that's that and we have the rear ones we have eight in uh, total so there's four outer and four inner fantastic let's have a look at hmm. now this here is a socket driver it's it's like a, um, a hand handheld one servo brackets on each end coupler plate uh, here that the fifth wheel fits on uh, locks for the rear of the cab and these are also locks uh, locator pins for the um, rear door handle for the coupler is here and uh, 
more for the um, rear access panel on the back of the sleeper and these are obviously the um, light covers for the, for the rear bumper and lastly in this box we have the fifth wheel coupler we have the servo savers for the transmission and the steering we have the um, steering hubs uh, on, on here which um, there's going to be a slight modification to that um, but we will show you that in the video we have the front cab floor plan uh, floor pan here and the rear sleeper cab floor just there and that has the battery tray in there we are going to be fitting a full multifunction unit into this uh, build and it's we're going to go through an easy modification so that is what is in that box so let me pull that up there have a look at what is in this box so always very well packaged um, Tamiya um, never had a part missing from the Tamiya kit I don't know if I've been lucky or just their uh, quality control is, is really good. Really good picture of the uh, King Aura there. So of course you've already seen that we have the wheels, the tyres rather. So we have um, the rear tyres, they're all the same. Um, they are... <laughs> They smell really good. Never had one of these um, rot away on me, but yeah, fantastic. Still running on the original 27 year old tyres for uh, for a long time. And I do run the truck, run it quite well. And there's the other two for the front. So you get two in there and the other four. So we have 10 lovely tyres. In this part, oh, the fixings, fixings bags. Uh, we have metal parts bag here, which has the transmission ends. Yes, they're aluminium. Um, lots of suspension parts, uh, front axle parts. These triangular parts are um, for the rear suspension, and this is the. Uh, coupler plate that goes underneath the fifth wheel parts bag A great stuff shall I get them out in order I don't know Parts bag B. The reason that they're they have that look like they have the same kind of screws in parts bag A and B because really you have use this bag first, then you use this bag second, and the parts left over out of this bag you may use a little bit later on. Then we have Oh no, the bag that everybody hates, parts bag C. And that has all of those little tiny clips that everybody hates, that you will lose some. But don't worry, because you get plenty in there. You have to be really unfortunate to lose all of them. 
Where is Park's bag? Park's bag D. Just a few ball uh, pins. These um, these ones just here um, hold your battery in. So yeah. We'll also go through the manual in great detail. And we have here parts bag E. These little clips, these little E clips. People love them. I've got loads of them. So it's it's pretty good. What's next? Parts bag F. It's just a bunch of um, screws. A few machine bolts, a few self tappers. All positive drive. So, yeah. F. Oh. <laughs> Some gearbox parts in this bag. Drive cups. Gear parts and um, suspension parts, the wheel hexes, and um, yeah, these are the uh, stubs for the front axle. What we have here, oh, we have some tools, we have the obligatory um, Tamiya ceramic grease, and the little box spanner. I have hundreds of those, and some uh, ball joints. Some uh, smaller uh, rod ends, some cable ties. This tool here. Now, I've always wondered what this was for, right? And I never figured it out until I watched somebody um, a couple of years ago on the on their YouTube. And these are for putting the small circlips the eclipse as some people call them and this this bit here is uh, helps them push so yeah that's what that's for we have some uh, body pins here allen key so you do get your box spanner and your allen key your allen keys for your pinion gear and your um drive shaft cups of which there are four of and the motor insulation plate Next bag is the mm, suspension parts. Suspension, uh, front uprights, you have your rear suspension um, parts on there. And you have the differential cases. Um, made out of al aluminium or aluminium, wherever you come from in the world. Um, it is not machined it's um die cast so there'd probably be a lot of um silica in that so not advisable to anodize those on a previous build the guys did um electro testing on them and said there's not enough aluminium in that casting um so if they anodized them they would probably dissolve so i ended up um Having them powder coated down at the local um, engineering shop. Yeah, so great. They did turn out quite well. Um, grub screws. There is um, two, four, six in there. We need um, one for the pinion gear and four for the um, drive cups. Oh, yeah, all good stuff. We have a bag of bearings or bushings, as these are. Now, I will be fitting roller bearings. If you're not going to um, run the truck too much, it's going to be a shelf queen. Stick with these, there's nothing wrong with them. I had them in mine for years. And after about 10 years, I swapped them for bearings because I went to 
um, more RC truck meetings because as the trucks have become more and more popular as you know that's why the YouTube videos that's out there so we have another bag here which has got the U-bolts for the rear suspension we have um, the shifter rod this long thin rod here that's a shifter rod um, these long pins long bolts here for the mud guards um, and the silver tubes are obviously the smokestack tops nothing really uh, too interesting in that bag hmm. next bag is the cast die cast aluminium uh, gears you have the crowns you have everything in there the internals um, you can buy different ones never had a Tamiya diff fail they're really quite good quality we will be looking at these in more close-up detail as we get through the build and we have some brass bushings these brass collars are for the shock absorbers these um, hard steel um, collars are for the rear pivot on the suspension and then we have um, this is for from memory that's for the front of the transmission that the selector fork goes on and some uh, screws some caps and uh, yeah there we go all well engineered stuff we have another bag of um, grab rails grab rails um, these larger ones here they're the mirrors these are the grab rails um, this pin that pin there um, that's the fifth wheel pin and that longer bolt let me get that out of the way the longer bolt here that goes right the way through the chassis through the suspension pivot and we have four of these aluminium um, spacer tubes they are threaded there are four of them in there and they are the gearbox spacers and do we have anything else in there yes we do we have the stays for the mud flaps we have the selector forks for the uh, transmission the fifth wheel um, pivot plate there and these metal pieces here are for the floor um, brackets that hold the cab on and the sleeper cab right here's something rather interesting these selector forks you can see that has a brass um, piece in there now that's the original Tamiya method of doing it right and they have three of those selector forks on the new trucks these are cast all in one because they're better I've never had a problem with the old way these have been pressed into steel now Tamiya do not revise kits while they're in production so basically they've never updated these they will not update a kit while it's in production and the King Hauler is one of their most popular 14 scale trucks I think the Scania's taken that place now with uh, people coming quite big in Germany but um, yeah the King Hauler that is the longest model production run that Tamiya have got without revision um, when they had the tanker kit um, they revised 
the graphics. So what they did is they discontinued the tanker and then they re-released it. So it went from Shell to um, Gallant. So yeah, if they want to make an amendment, they will discontinue it and then re-release it. Right, so, what else? There we go. Let's ah. move that to one side. That's there. And what do we have in here? We have hmm, the aerial. Yeah, fantastic. Never ever fitted one of those. They fit in the roof. This little uh, bolt with a um, like a thread was on there. Don't need these if you're going to use one of the new um, 2.4. But they still include these in the kit because they don't revise them. So that's that one. And we have the sticker sheet. Absolutely brilliant. Very, very good quality um, stickers on that. I won't be using these stickers because I have had some made for this project. And they are stunning. And I can't wait to get to that part. So there are the graphics and there is the manual. Probably one of the best um, manuals really that Tamiya um, really do go into detail on these. I am going to do another video on what the manual tells you. Um, quite frankly, it really does go into detail. These are far, far better than Hercules Hobby. The quality of the plastics, the quality of the aluminiums are better than the Hercules Hobby, which is just a blatant rip-off of Tamiya uh, stuff. So right, that is basically the unboxing. I'm not going to bore you anymore, so I'm going to lay all this out. Oh yeah, lots of um, big parts, and that's not including the fixings. Really, no need to be scared about these builds, because they are an absolute joy to build. I've been building Tamiya models for oh, the thick end of 42 years. Yeah, since I was 12. Oh, well, I'm old. Should know better than to play with toys. Let's look at the crown finish. It's gorgeous. I forgot to show you these. I didn't see them in the box. That is the springs for the um, fake dampers, shock absorbers. It has the mesh for the grill. It has some double-sided um, tape and some uh, wood flaps. Um, some really small springs, etc. Um, mirror brackets. Yep, all seems to be good in the hood. 
We have the um, tool bag, light lenses, exhaust parts, some more fixings, damper collars, and uh, gears, metal parts bag again, drive cups, hex, uh, wheel hexes, and some gear parts axle studs and uh, mm, almost forgot the liquid thread lock the build manual we're going to go into that in great detail and sticker sheets absolutely brilliant quality dashboard license plates Yeah, I don't think that actually uh, says anything for me. So, what I'm going to do in the next episode is I will be explaining the build manual. I'll be explaining what it tells you, what to look for, and uh, how to handle the parts. And... Um, I'll also be showing you some of the upgrades that I'll be doing, the motor, some cosmetic um, upgrades um, that I'll be doing. So nothing too scary, nothing that uh, uh, somebody that's relatively new to the hobby would be able to carry out. So yeah, that's um, pretty good. Still not sure, I might put a diffuser on my um, light because my light is flickering I have to look at the settings in my camera or something but yeah that is the king holder right now off to edit this video i don't know how long it's going to be i don't know how bored you're going to be but like comment subscribe share if anybody um that you know um, is getting one i'll be going through a step by step guide as to how to build these things and um, so it's going to be really easy to follow so yeah stay tuned hit that notification bell so you get a notification when i upload the video i have two weeks off work now and i'm really going to get stuck into this and uh, try and get all the footage done um edit it and then go back to work just remember, this is a hobby to enjoy. People say, oh, I can build these in a day. You don't have to build these in a day. Some people do it in their spare time. That's what a hobby is. Okay. And you build it at your pace. There's no rush. There's no race. You don't get um, medals for completing it in record time. As long as you build it and you're happy with it then all will be good this is an american truck very little glue um, needed to assemble this the euro trucks the scanners the mercedes um, they do need a bit more uh, work doing to them but again they're all based on the same uh, setup of chassis it's just the cab and the bits that bolt on that are different so yeah Hope you like this and uh, I'll see you very, very soon.